Hello, everybody. Thank you, Rémi, and thank you for all of you attending with me on the web. At CBC Radio Canada, this past year was all about our five-year strategy. 2015, everyone, every way, and its implementation across the country. It was about being more distinctively Canadian, more regional, and more digital. When we launched this plan two years ago, questions were raised about local weekend news and whether we saw that part of our strategy. Well, here we are, two years later, delivering new weekend news and late night news on television, on radio, and online in places like Montreal, Ottawa, Edmonton, the North, and here in St. John's. For you here, and for the rest of Newfoundland and Labrador, this has meant growing on point a show about local newsmakers and politics that launched during the 2011 election campaign. Hosted by David Cochrane, who you'll see in a few minutes joining us in our panel discussion, On Point now includes a weekly 20-minute spot on TV and a half-hour radio call-in show on Friday afternoons. Aujourd'hui, nous offrons aux Canadiens plus de 30 services. Canadians, more 30 services with contents, which is going to go from classical music with programs for children, with also reality TV and, and also arts theatre, theatre arts. Despite all of our progress, all of our achievements and our focus on delivering on the promises that we set out in Strategy 2015, we continue to face a variety of challenges from regulatory to financial. The first of these challenges is the very ecosystem in which we operate. Back in 2008, vertical integration was mainly limited to boardroom conversations. The Canadian mediascape was still comprised of many independent companies spread across different media segments. Not anymore. Today, the vast majority of media content in Canada is controlled by four corporations, Bell, Rogers, Shaw and Quebecar who have massive influence on our broadcasting system and dominant market power. Together, they control almost 85% of the entire television market. In fact, these four plus TELUS control 83% of our broadcasting and telecom revenues. And if, Bill's Bill, I'm sorry, and if Bell's bid to buy Astral Media is successful, Bell will control 36% of conventional TV revenues according to the CRTC's latest report. That's more than twice the amount of its largest competitor. And on the radio side, their control would amount to 31%. We're not saying that this is bad or that this is good. We're simply giving you facts. So these facts, these percentages and these numbers, what do they mean to you in this room and to Canadians that are listening to us today? Well, they tell us that the diversity and ranges of voices in Canadian media is at stake. And that's something that everyone in this room should care about. Despite the almost unlimited quantity and choice of content available, there is little of it that is Canadian when it comes to English, tele uh, English television, and very little of the rest is free from a small number of commercial agendas. And that's where the public broadcaster comes in. That's where we come in. In this slide, please look at it, which shows CBC, CTV's, and Global's primetime television schedules from this season. The red blocks are Canadian programming, and the blue blocks aren't. We've shown this slide at previous annual public meetings because this needs to be talked about and this needs to be understood. This is where CBC Radio Canada stands out. We own the red blocks. And we don't do it because it's a CRTC requirement in a benefits package imposed on us in the context of the closing of a deal or of a merger. We do it because we believe that Canadian programming is at the core of our mandate. Oui, les émissions. No, yes, the Canadian programs cost a lot. So why do we continue to produce them? 
because a big country diversified whose population is dispersed everywhere geographically, who doesn't have the means to tell its own stories, share its common experiences, debate its different issues, doesn't stay united for a long time. Television and radio are not perhaps the only means to bring Canadians together. But they're surely, for the moment, the most efficacious or effective and economical means to do it. The challenge is financial in nature, and that won't surprise you. But here's what we are doing about it. As most of you know, our appropriations were reduced by $115 million over three years. And when you add on unavoidable cost increases and the investments that we, that we require in order to transform ourselves into a modern public broadcaster, our challenge is then a budget reduction of $200 million over three years, plus a one-time hit of $25 million for severance. And the CRTC's decision in July to eliminate support for local television programming by discontinuing the Local Programming Improvement Fund, that everybody refers to as the LPIF, obviously adds to our financial challenges. As for the justification of eliminating the $2.17 LPIF, monthly charge on my cable bill, in order to lower costs for consumers, I'm not sure that it works for me, given the fact that I just received a notice from my cable company informing me that the cost of their service is going up $1.99 a month for the second time in six months. This time they say that it's about programming costs and an increase in the cost of their digital equipment. So much for my cable bill. Yet, improving local service is one of CBC Radio Canada's top priorities, as you'll remember from my opening statements a few seconds ago. This CRTC decision doesn't change that. But there is no question that it will negatively affect overall local television program in smaller markets. Uh, up, up to now, we have set up a certain number of other solutions to face up to our financial challenges. We have, for example, completely transformed Radio Canada International, which now broadcasts only on the web in five languages, French, English, Spanish, Arab, and Mandarin. On the 24th of June, which was uh, it, it marked the end of transmission on short waves of our service of international radio. Nous avons July 31st. All of our 620 analog TV transmitters, including several here in Newfoundland. Unfortunately, in a few places around this province and in other provinces in this country, the shutdown affected more than simply antenna users. In August, we were copied on a letter sent to the CRTC by one of Newfoundland's MHAs, Mr. Jim Bennett from St. Barb, who stated his concern that some subscribers to Eastlink in Western Newfoundland and Labrador lost access to local CBC programming. We are well aware of this problem. And please know that it is only temporary. We're working hard right now with Eastlink, and the situation will be resolved in January. And by the way, we thank you for your patience with this situation. In August, we also announced the sale of Bold, one of our few specialty channels, and we cancel the development of three others. We are also reducing the range of programming in music, in sports, and even in news. And we are now aiming to decrease our real estate footprint by at least 800,000 square feet by 2017. Our next week, though, will be about our license renewals that are set to begin on November 19th. Canadians now have an opportunity to remind the CRTC of the importance of the Canadian program we bring to you and of the other services we render. It's been 13 years since our licenses were reviewed. It's about time. While Strategy 2015 sets out the vision for the future of CBC Radio Canada, we need a regulatory framework that will enable our progress and that will allow us to maintain our presence no matter what degree of consolidation happens around us or how fast technology and demographics change. So with that said, let's turn over to numbers 
and to Suzanne Maris, our CFO.